Hey guys, thank you for checking out our video. My name is Sean Elders and this is Pinnacle Combat Arts. Like, subscribe, comment down below, hit the bell so you can be notified every time we get a new video. Today we're going to be talking about short stick and we're going to be doing Pan and Jockman inside of the short stick, inside of Sombrata and Hubud and all the other good stuff. Let's get started. Pan and Jockman, we're just gonna basically focus on uh, three or four different kicks inside of it, okay? We're gonna be doing the basic SEPA, okay? We're gonna be doing the, the, just, we'll do, I'll use English. So we do, for instance, an oblique kick or shovel kick, front kick, okay, round kick, and then we also have a short side kick. It's not the standard like you'd see in Taekwondo or Karate where they extend the, the side kick all the way out. That's not what we're talking about. We're doing Pan and Jockman. It's a little bit different, okay? It's, it's not about getting that full extension of uh, your side kick out there. It's more about angulation. Sometimes that side kick won't even be quite a side kick. It'll actually be, if your, your foot could, instead of it being completely horizontal like you're being taught normally, you may angulate it like this because you're going for a kneecap uh, or upper thigh, or you may even go into the hip, hip area to disrupt move. We'll start off doing some basic contra sombrata. Now, when we're focused on the short stick, what's nice about the short stick is it got kind of gives you a feeling between a long uh, a sword and a knife or a basic stick, but the short stick is really great. And there's a lot of wonderful things that you can do inside of it. And you, you really get a little bit of a uh, different sense of, of movement. So we're going to just do some basic, uh, Sombrata, okay. So five count contra sombrata. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So when we're inside of this, when I when I do that number one like this, okay, I can come in and do a round kick to the thigh. Okay. Or if I have shoes on, I can use that the toe kick. And if you have blades on it, then you're cutting the thigh. So that when I do that number one and he does the inside deflection, everything, all of his, all of his anatomy and everything is moving this way. And that's when I could come in with that shot. He gives me the four and we go back into the sombrata. Okay. So he'll do the same thing. So when I go one, then I'm going down like that. And so you're going to be doing a pendulum step here, just like that. One and two, one and two, as I do that number one. Okay. I come here just like that and so when he swings that around i'm dealing with it here he's going to be able to get that shot in there see that as he puts that one out yep just like this okay and so he's setting himself up in a really good position okay then i give him the four and we continue okay so when i go here let me do that again so at when i'm going when i do that roof here okay when i start when i do that roof i'm already i'm going to set myself up and come here, bam. And then I'm pendulum step and go back into it. So right when he roofs, he's gonna rotate and do that kick at the same time, okay? And then I give him the four, and then we go back inside. So as soon as I go like this, oh, that time I did it here. As soon as I go like this, boom. Yeah, just like that. So roof and then bam. And so the one is just the distraction when you're going in for the shot here, okay? I come in here and I go to this position. So when I come here, I'm getting my weight distribution right. And then I'm just throwing this and this is distracting them to go here. See that? And I could go and go to eye shot there as well when I'm doing that. So I go here and then I'm back in. Boom, there it is. See that? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Bam, 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 boom. Okay, so that's the first one. Take your time learning that. I, it really is important that you go nice and slow and you build up that movement, okay? Now, another one is when I do a roof, okay, my weight, okay, I can put my weight on my back foot and when that number one comes in, I can come straight into a body shot or front, a front kick to the groin, okay, snap kick, or a shot to the belly, okay? 
And so when he goes to do that roof, boom, there it is. See that? So I, when I come, as soon as I go here, I'm going to put my distribu distribute my weight to my back foot. And then when he comes in for that number one, he's going to walk into that. Okay? So right there, boom, he gets me. See that? And when I come here, I go here. And then I'm able, I distribute, as soon as I come with that two, here, I distribute the weight to the back foot. And he comes in. And this may, is also a bait. Because now, if I if I go from my weight being here to here, if he if he knows range well, he's gonna fill that space and he's gonna come forward. And as he does that, he's gonna walk right into the to the attack. Boom. Yep. Okay. So bam. And so another thing I do when he does that number one, he he feels it. Is I right here? I'll I'll kind of pull like that and then do it too. And that really helps. Boom. And and what's happening is he's gonna grab a little bit here and he's gonna pull me into it. See? Okay. Yep. Keep going. You go ahead and do it again. Bam. See that? Yep. Bam. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's all about timing. That's an important part because when he goes in for that number one, I need to draw him in. <laughs> you see that? Okay. And that's very important. Okay, so that's your second one. The third one I'm going to have you do is where you're going to do the oblique uh, kick. I can, you can do attacks during an attack. You're attacking on a high line or when you're defending as well. Okay, and so when we do, when we do this, when I'm, going, when I'm doing my sombrata, okay, when I come here like this, when I come with enough here, I can also come right here. Okay. But he also can kick me. So you remember that as well, because this is going to be actually on the other side of that. So when I do this number one, I'm going to kick. Okay. And then he comes in and we go back to position. Okay. So. <clears throat> boom. Just like that. And I'm being nice. I could go straight for his kneecap, uh, but I'll do the upper thigh. Okay. So what you want to do to start with to practice this is just practice going like this, like that. And just getting that. Boom. Just like this. Boom. Like that. And you're, so you're getting used to doing this motion at the same time. Why do we do Pan and Jockman? There's two or three main reasons why we do Pan and Jockman. One is obviously to hurt them. Okay. You want to kick their kneecap out. You want to injure them. You want to do something like that. The other reason is to disrupt their balance, disrupt their focus, disrupt them in some way, shape, or form to create an, a new line of attack so you can end this, this fight quickly okay and that's really what Pan and Jockman has to do with so again we're going we're doing our movement okay and so right when I go to this shield okay like this I'm gonna go and bring my knee up and then I'm gonna do the kick go back into the motion okay so when I go here BAM and then I go back in okay and so right here when after I do that motion when I come in here Bam. And then what I do instead of if, if I'm in the male triangle position here, I'm going to go bam just like this. And when I sit that foot down, boom, I put it in front instead of back in there. Instead of going like this, I go like this. And I replace, I do what we call a replacement step. Boom. One and two. Okay. And then we're, give me that one and we go right into it. Just like that. Okay, so when I go here, I'm set. As soon as I go here, I'm gonna start putting my weight distribution to that front foot, so that when I do that one, bam, and then I put that foot down. I want to put it down in the front, not back here. And I switch your feet, go right into it. Okay, so I want you to do it now. Okay, so right when he does that, he puts that weight distribution and he comes in. Boom. Yep. And what's the the other part to this? that you may have started to pick up is, is that we can do things with our hands to affect their delay to the roof. Okay. So for instance, when I do this shield, I mean, he does the shield and he starts to go do that. Number one, he can push pull a little bit as he steps in and kicks. Bam. See that? And then, and then he's doing this at the same time. And I got to figure out how to deal with that. Okay. I could either, Try to get away from that hand, but what it's doing is it's delaying me. 
okay? But I could also go to the forearm as well. But the idea is, is that you're using the top and the bottom corresponding with each other to throw off their balance, to throw off their timing, to throw off their, the gain that they're trying to make. So that's what we're doing, okay? That's the important part of this whole thing. Now, um, the last one we're gonna do is what we call uh, is, is a side kick, okay? And like I said, it's not the traditional Taekwondo, you know, long, you know, this long kick like this, okay? It's not that. The side kick that we're gonna do is actually when he does that number four, okay, I'm gonna go bam, just like that. And so notice, look how my foot is angled. It's not angled like this, okay? So why do we kick this way? Why don't we kick the traditional way? The reason why we don't kick the traditional way is because it takes us away from the action, okay? A traditional side kick is a long range tool, okay? You want to think of it as like this. You have a, a strike that's in the front vertical, you have a strike that is diagonal up this way, and you have a strike that's diagonal up this way, okay? Those are basically the three different ways that I'm going to have you do it. And sometimes you may come in this way as well, but with the toes, okay? But when we're engaging with the flat part of our foot, the more I turn away, the less I'm able to engage with the top half. Pan and Jockman, okay? A lot of people are asking me the difference between, you know, different kicking systems in the Philippines. Pan, the difference is that Pan and Jockman is a engaging kicking system that keeps you engaged the whole time, okay, with the top half and the bottom half, okay? That's, I think that's a very important part of this. The other part is that it's, it, is a, it is a shoe system and in that it, the, the, the sewing in the shoe, a lot of times would have seashells that traditionally, before they had uh, razor blades, they would have seashells, broken seashells that are real sharp and they would poke holes in that seashell and they would sew it into the, into the bottom of their shoe along the side so that when they would cut, they could use these techniques to cut the leg open inside of it, okay? And then later on, as, as, the, the, as, as te technology changed, they would put, they tied, they would put razor blades inside, they'd, un they'd cut all the lacing around the bottom of the shoe, okay? And then relace it with blades in it. And they'd walk and trudge through cow manure and all this other stuff. And so when they cut them, okay, they didn't die right away from the combat, they died later from the, the, uh, the, the, the manure, okay, getting into the bloodstream, the toxins that go into the bloodstream. So keep that in mind when we're talking about Panda Jockman, it's a different, it's, it's a, it is a indigenous uh, system. Um, I try to, most of the stuff that I teach is, is more indigenous. It's not the more modern Filipino martial arts but a, a, you have to remember that this is the indigenous way. When we use a stick, it's not we're, that we're using a stick. It represents the sword of any, or any weapon of equal length, okay? We use a stick because it's safer. That's all. That's the only reason, okay? And when I was training, we used dulled knives and dulled swords, okay? And then nowadays, we have all sorts of different training devices. But we have to keep that in mind. So when that number four comes in, all I'm doing is just coming in and doing this motion here. So he does the number four, boom, okay? And that could be a straight, but it's not quite a straight. It's at a diagonal, okay? It's kind of diagonaled up, okay? We can't call it a front kick, okay? So I just call it, in English terms, we call this, I'm just going to call that a side kick, okay? But it's not the traditional side kick that you'll see. So if you're a traditional karate guy or traditional taekwondo guy, and you're like, oh, that's inappropriate it's not the same art it's not the same thing we're not doing this not doesn't have the same purpose so don't start jumping down the bandwagon you know understand what we're trying to do here we're trying to disrupt and we're trying to or hurt them because a lot of times people make a mistake of they they straighten their kneecap out and you go and you break that kneecap is that if that kneecap's already as far as it can go it doesn't take much pound of pressure to make them to pop that knee okay so when we go into this, the other part is, is when I engage that number four, my hand goes into what we call C-cup position like this. 
and I'm hitting that hand just like that, bam, right on the hand. So I'm going here and I go bam, just like that as I do that. Boom, and then we go back into the motion. Okay, so when he does it, just like when he does that drop stick, he's going here, boom. He does that motion here. He thrusts and I come in there, shield, roof, one, and then bam, just like that. Notice I'm not turning my body all the way. I'm not doing that. Okay, let's do it from this angle. Okay, and then we, when I come in here, I'm going like this, see, like that. Bam, and then thrust, and then we go back into the motion. Good, thrust, shield, bam, just like that. We have to exchange our weight distribution when we practice it. And that weight distribution has to take place the move before we actually do the technique. Because if you don't weight, change that weight distribution before, you will not get it done on the right timing. We're trying to deflect and strike at the same time, okay? And so this is all part of it. And then later on, you'll be able to break that timing up and there's all kinds of advanced stuff that we could talk about. But this is just an introduction to Pan and Jockman. Take them, work them, get them, get better at it, and I'll see you next time. Go to our website, pinnaclecombatarts.com. There you can find out more about what I do and the classes that I provide. Thank you guys so much for your support and have a great day.